A thriving leather industry gets the death blow. Export markets dry up due to ecological reasons and the collapse of the Soviet Union. Many craftsmen move to the cities to do menial jobs. But Tarun stays back. Soaring silk prices shrink the local markets. Middlemen push printers to use cheap fabrics, damaging their reputation. Thousands rendered jobless as many printers close shop and move to urban centers. But Babua refuses to down the shutters. Middlemen push for faster, cheaper products to meet tourist demands. Cheap chemical dyes take the place of traditional vegetable dyes. Traditional skills die as urbanization and commerce takes over. But Ghansham keeps his skills alive. Skilled weavers from East Bengal arrive here after the partition. Cooperatives set up to protect them from exploitation. Mismanagement puts the industry in a crisis. But Sudangshu fights his own battle. The end of the British era brings to an end the royal patronage. Subsequent industrialization and availability of machine-made clothes kill the market for tailor-made costumes. Skilled master tailors forced to work in factories. But Sahiban Ali holds on to his craft. Powerful groups dominate the market, forcing individual weavers out. Craftsmen associated with master weavers for years at a loose end. Unfair trade practices add to the weaver's woes. But Murti survives it all. See, I'm working in uh, the area of loom and handicrafts for the last 30-40 years. Around the say 60s, you've seen the really handicrafts and everything went down. There was no patronage, there was no motivation. You saw Ghansham in Sanganer, you saw Torun in Madhamgram. They are extremely good craftspeople. They, they have wonderful products which you all will buy in the city. But the point is, how do they reach the market? In 1989, a group of seven leather craftsmen set up a workshop with the help of OS3 of Switzerland. But due to certain misunderstandings, we had to discontinue. With the help of Fairtrade and CRC, we could set up business once again. Thanks to Fairtrade, we now get regular orders and advances against orders.
Local market went down when the cost of raw material shot up. Thanks to CRC and fair trade, I started supplying to the international market. My problem of excess labor was solved. CRC helped me to develop new products and new designs. It also taught me to use different materials like viscose, cotton, chiffon and crepe for the local market. When the local market is down, I depend on the export market and when the demand and export falls, I fall back on the local market. I wish to have a continuous association with the fair trade movement. I was invited to an exhibition organized by the Crafts Council of India with all my products. Products made both with natural dyes and chemical dyes. Irani Didi stressed mainly on the use of natural dyes and selected many of my products. It was CRC which helped me restore my faith in the vegetable dyes. CRC also helped me to develop new products like sarongs, scarves and stoles for the first time. We work together in a group of about 60 to 70 people, both men and women. It is a cooperative effort. Initially, we used to get work home and do a few pieces. It was irregular work. As big ladies boutiques opened, our business went down. Gradually we got to know of CRC and joined with them. Started making new designs, cushion covers, bed heads, curtains. Our orders increased and more people started getting work. Now they are getting good benefits from this. When I faced bad times, I approached CRC for work. CRC understood my problems and helped in many ways. They gave me regular export orders. I hope that I continue to get work from them. A number of weavers from Tangail district across the border arrived here between 1966-68 and settled down. The middlemen exploited us by giving less than 10% of the market price. Thanks to CRC, I now get better rates and continuous work. A number of weavers and their families are now working with us and are better employed. Now everything is fine and I hope that I have a long association with CRC. After the death of my father, a number of people harass me. They would give orders but not collect and not pay. Then CRC helped me and now gives me regular work.
Now in Warangal, I have employed a number of weavers, about 150, doing dyeing and weaving work. In Siripuram too, 50 weavers are employed. We export through CRC and also directly. We supply it to the local market too. Sometimes the intervention by Craft Resource Centre may not even be direct. The Kurja Pottery Group near Delhi and the Silver Jewellery Group from Jaipur were already successful groups. All they were lacking in was line management and innovation. CRC helped them to understand the importance of quality versus quantity and adherence to strict delivery schedules. They also began to realise the need for constant innovation and a better professional outlook. CRC thus guided them gently and helped them to remain a step ahead of their competitors. CRC is a link between the alternative trading organizations spread across the globe and we help the bridge and bring them closer with the producers of the subcontinent. One of the objectives of fair trade is that people should not migrate from their own places. So what we try to do that they should be in their place and produce what they were traditionally producing if there is a traditional craftsman. Fair trade always says there has to be a domestic market because of the fickle export market. Craft Resource Centre only helps them with the export market but we motivate them to explore their own domestic market. The other work that we do in Craft Resource Centre is coordination among different groups. Somebody weaves fabric, somebody prints fabric. So this coordination is done. It's completely craft resource centers work. That has given uh, employment to many. See the work that we do in fair trade, it's always the product is never that important. It's always the people and then the product. So if you have to do that, if you have to bring in the people in the product, you have to know their lifestyle, you have to know their uh, surrounding, you have to know their culture, their background and all that. So once you know all that, you know what exactly where they are. We were in a workshop for uh, revival and innovation of the traditional textiles of Asian country. So Sudhanshu went with me and uh, in that workshop we had uh, weavers from all countries. Uh, China, Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, everybody was there. But wow, what we realized that how superior is our craft skill. And we was there trying to tell the others how a uh, loom should be made, how the cotton should be spun, how the and the handling of the silk. None of the other countries knew because you know they will always make a lump of the silk yarn. It's very delicate. But Sudhanshu was the master there. These are success stories of people with no resources, hardly any formal education, and no knowledge of anything happening outside their immediate surroundings. Whoever said trade and social development do not go hand in hand, could take a leaf out of the CRC book of fair trade practices. Today, if a refugee from East Bengal travels to a foreign country and confidently displays his skills, believe me, it is no mean achievement. <laughs> 